So today we celebrate the life of a man who gave himself totally to God. Not just because he was a priest, but the kind of life he lived, the kind of virtues he exuded, amazing. And that is why we are all being called in one way or the other to emulate Saint Anthony of Padua. Saint Anthony of Padua himself did not want to die a simple death, if we can use that for the want of a better word. He wanted to die as a martyr, to be killed for the faith. But sometimes our ways, <laughs> Mr. Dochi is smiling, yes. He wanted to die a martyr. He wanted to be killed for the faith. <laughs> but that is, your ways are not the ways of God. Today we are in white. This young man, St. Anthony of Padua, was not 100 years, 60, 70, 80. He was not even 40 years when he died. St. Anthony, he was just 37, 35 about to be 36 and i have loved the name anthony because my late father was called anthony and the senior brother called anthony so one of the saints i read about as a little boy was saint anthony of padua it was only when i went to the seminary that i realized that anthony of padua does not even come from where padua he was a portuguese he was from portugal baptized with the name fernando Fernando and at the age of 15 he said no I would want to dedicate my life to God he was from a very prominent and rich family he said, what is happening to you why, why are you going to go he say I want to go to give myself I want to go enjoy the regular canon that is uh, the Augustinian order he said, ah, you are too young take your time 15 years one five he went and when he went there, you can imagine a rich man's son who has gone to live with monks and all that. Every day, the family members will come there. Are you okay? Hey. Two years after, he told them, hey, even change where I am. If I'm in Accra, take me to a place that nobody can come. And he was transferred to Combra, where he stayed for nine years, studying theology, Latin, building himself in the faith. As they will say, Steady to show yourself approved. He studied, learned about God, and he continued his life as an Augustinian. Augustinian. And it is said that around that time he was ordained a priest. Now, why did he become a Franciscan? When he was in Cumbria working and all that, the first five martyrs of the Franciscan order, they had gone to preach in Sebile here in Africa, Morocco, moving from Europe there. And as they were preaching there, the Muslims killed them, five Franciscans. They were killed. And when they were killed, the king at the time mentioned that, oh, may these people, may they be brought back to their homeland, to Europe, so that they can be given a wonderful burial. At least, it will help them soothe their pain and all that. So, these five martyrs were brought all the way from Morocco. And uh, young um, Anthony, walking around Portugal, moving the streets, where he said, ah, now who are these people? They said, oh, these are Franciscans. They went to preach in Morocco among the Muslims, and they have been killed. I said, hey, people are so, have such kind of zeal this is the kind of zeal i want this is the kind of zeal i have not to stay here with you be drinking wine and be eating and be no i'm gone they said take your time he said i want to be a franciscan they said no the prior the leader said no you can't go take your time what are you mean ah, you are not he persisted and persisted the point that there was nothing they could do it's like me here as father kujo a diocesan priest and i tell the archbishop archbishop i am done with the diocesan order now i want to go and join the monastery so he switched and then he went to join the franciscans it is at that point that he chose the name anthony um that was the name being used by the patriarch 
of the hermitage he joined at the time. So he chose Anthony. Now, how did he get to Padua? Somebody born in Portugal, working in Portugal, or or Padua. On his way, because he told the Franciscans that if I join you on one condition, that when I join you, you will send me to Morocco. I want to go to Morocco. If not, I won't change. They said, we, 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 we agree. So, they sent him to Morocco. As fate will have it, when Anthony went to Morocco, his health began to fail. He couldn't preach. He couldn't stand up. He, hey, he's going down. He said, he said no, 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 Anthony. Right here, dear. You have to go back <laughs> to where you came from. Now, go back. When you are better, then you do what? You come to you. On his way back from Morocco, there was a storm. Those days, until then, there was no plane. <laughs> so, El Maroc. You no. Know, ship. Storm. And so, the ship that was bringing him to Portugal, direction was changed. Pope John's, our, our motto, we said to the Veladamus, shum, he was sent to a place, Sicily. By the time you realize the ship had arrived at Sicily, and that was in Italy. Well, when he got to Sicily, the Franciscans who were there, they took him, supporting him, helping him, supporting him, helping him, supporting him, helping him. When he got a little bit better, he moved to the north, still preaching. There are a lot of stories about the people. We don't have time. This is morning mass. Even I'll give that to those stories. He preached. He preached. He preached. Even became the provincial superior there for the uh, Franciscans. And so basically now he has, he has moved location from Portugal to where? Italy. North of Italy. And there, that is how come he got into Padua. And when you go to Padua, they say, you were there last two years. A huge basilica for Anthony. He stank. You know that Anthony's stank is still fresh till today. Huh, I tell you, sometimes people say there are no miracles in the Catholic Church. I say, hey, the kind of miracles in the Catholic Church, you can't find in other churches. I'm telling you, you don't know. In Anthony of Padua, when he preached and preached, this man was preaching. People did not like him. So if you are preaching, people don't like you. It's normal. He will move and go and preach to what? To fish. Fish. I'm telling you. Things have happened in the Catholic Church. And I pray that God will revive such things in our days. We will keep our holiness. We will keep our enthusiasm for God. And nothing will stop us. And this is the man. And he preached and preached. He's known as the outstanding preacher. You know, because he has studied with the Augustinians. When he entered the Franciscans, fantastic. Combining that with the zeal, the amount of preaching he did, and how did they know he could preach? Once I'm told that the Dominicans and the Franciscans, they gathered for an ordination. And the Franciscans thought that the Dominicans, they are known as the order of preachers. They preach well. They have studied. They will preach. They also thought that the Franciscans will do what? Will preach. So when they were ready, and they said, uh -huh. Why they preach? I said, Ah, now you didn't appoint somebody. Say, no. And the superior of the Franciscans, I said, Hey, as for my people, they don't know anything. No, the Franciscans, we are just living a poor life. We have no idea. Okay, anyway, hey, Anthony, say something. You just say something small. Mm -hmm. And that is how God works. From that day, the kind of homely he gave, he said, Hey, my co Fringa, amazing, splendid. And that, from that day, he got into preaching outstanding preacher of the faith and that is why his tongue has not rotten till today now in the year 1231 he was exhausted he has moved he had moved and moved places mind you no cars nothing preaching preaching it got to a point that it is said in some of the books that augustine had to get his congregation had to give him a bodyguard not even when he came out, people were holding scissors hmm, to cut his, his habits. I'm telling you. Miracles, people were just, people wanted to just touch him, come to him, listen to him. Confession after mass, he can't do anything. People will come, confess. He was so exhausted. So they got him a bodyguard. So that at least his health will not fail. But I'm telling you, it was too much. And on the 13th today, 
of June 1231. He had actually moved out of Padua on preaching work. And his, his health was getting bad. He said he wanted to get back to Padua. He couldn't get there. He was in Aracela, some two, some few miles from Padua, when he died after praying, receiving the last sacraments and praying. And of course, I'm told he blessed Padua from a distance, from where he was in Archela. This is the life of St. Anthony of Padua. We look for him for missing items, mention them. All these have stories we may give in the evening. But the point is this, the virtuous life he lived, the life of holiness is what we are all called to follow. Not just miracles, no. The holiness he lived. Saint Anthony of Padua, one of the saints who less than a year, he died today, 13th June, 1231. By on the 30th of May, 1232, Saint Gregory, at the time Pope Gregory the Ninth, had declared him a saint already because of the amount of miracles that were coming from his tomb side and also from people invoking his name for various intentions so that the power of God would be made manifest. I pray, we pray, that our lives will be virtuous like that of Saint Anthony. Amen.